And we're talking about aviation power. And now, you know, sort of implied in this, they're breaking apart renewables and looking at that kind of standalone as well as part of this newer, simpler, stronger GE. That seems to be the message this morning. That's exactly right. When you're talking about production, you're talking about manufacturing, a lot of synergies between those two. Also, really noteworthy when it comes to pension obligations and liabilities, a lot of that falls on those two divisions as well. Part of the reason capital remains uh, within that reimagined GE2, although they did say they're going to streamline that. In terms of healthcare, spinning that off, we actually have comparables in the market. Most recently, Siemens Health and Ears, which IPO just a couple of months ago, and is up, I believe, about 12 percent um, since it went public. So this is probably the most direct comparable to that. They did note in the call, which I think is just wrapping up right now, that about $18 billion in liabilities and pension obligations will transfer to uh, to that new standalone health business. Yes. Uh, so that is definitely noteworthy. The other thing that really jumped out at me is this idea, Flannery said, aggressively working to reduce, eliminate, or mitigate exposure to long-term care insurance. We're talking about GE Capital. That's been a big issue. The fact that they took that almost $22 billion charge tied to that legacy insurance business. It, it's 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 stuff like that that's happened over the last. It's a complicated process yes. to do that. Uh, and within that, you're talking like about $42 billion in liabilities. You, they're a secondary insurer. There are ways that they conceivably can try and put back certain things to the primary insurers. But it's piecemeal. It takes a long time to do it. But I think the key to a certain extent, Morgan, is at least that I've been assured by people that they have searched under every rock and they do not believe that there are going to be any other surprises when it comes to that. And of course, that was one of the keys to really determining, I think, the, 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 the tumult in terms of the stock price was when they came out with that number that was so far above what anybody had anticipated. Yeah, and I think what you just said is very much key for investors and for Wall Street. I think a lot of folks were feeling very burned in recent months because it would seem like every time GE met investors, there was another piece of news coming out, be it some sort of regulatory probe, be it these reserve charges, et cetera, et cetera. So the idea that perhaps everything's out there, that could mean maybe stability in the stock. I, I would imagine that that's probably part of the reason you're seeing this stock rally this morning as well, just as much as the fact that we now have this longer-term strategy. Well, the, the analyst community has been sort of tough to tough to please yeah. on this one. H have they been reacting this morning so far to the announcement? Uh, so far, I, I've seen a couple of notes. Um, you know, as I mentioned, this call with uh, the analyst community with investors is just wrapping up now. So, so we'll see what the commentary is as the morning unfolds. Uh, important to note, you know, a lot of the changes that have already taken place, I think, under Flannery, when you really think about the company that he inherited from ML last summer, um, you know, power was down 50 percent, uh, trying to turn that around. He's, they were in free cash flow decline. Um, leverage was at, at over three and a half times because they'd added debt to buy back stock, which clearly in retrospect was probably not the best move to have done. Um, and so they have been attacking things, taking $2 billion in costs out. Now another $500 million added to that in terms of what they believe they can take. They're going to take leverage down by one and a half turns, at least by 2020. That's the plan. Um, and uh, the separation, obviously, being one of the keys today, uh, one of the biggest things that, they, that they've done after a long period of, of study of what would be best for, they believe, uh, the company itself. So a lot has gone on. We haven't even mentioned the transportation with Wabtec deal. Yeah. Yesterday's deal, small but not insignificant in terms of the three billion sale of some of those engines. Um, they've done a lot. They've done a lot. It hasn't been enough to satisfy investors in any way. But yeah. they, you know, today is obviously the biggest thing that they have done during his tenure. Yeah, and of course, the other one to watch is going to be uh, Baker Hughes, GE Baker Hughes, see what that stock does on this news as well. I think it's important to note that they did essentially already spin out that oil and gas into this merged company, a very similar deal to what we're seeing take place with transportation and Wabtec, but they do own about two-thirds uh, of the shares there, so that'll be how they unwind that over the next right. couple you of can, years. Right, you can sell it into the market, but you kind of obviously dump it all at one time, yeah. so they're saying two and a half to three years to fully divest themselves of the Baker Hughes asset. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.